Our next speaker, I'm sure, will continue to inspire us uh, and raise a few eyebrows as well. It's very interesting. Uh, Jasmina Aganovic. Uh, and helping, now she's the president of Mother Dirt, and I know that uh, coming in, you had some folks here. I heard someone say, are you attending? Yes, my president is here, uh, Jasmina. So I know you have a few people from Mother Dirt here. In helping to launch Mother, uh, Mother Dirt, a brand that started out, out of the biotech AO Biome, Bi Biome Jasmina um, has continued her focus on researching and development of products for the skin microbe. Did I say that right? Micro, right, yes, microbiome. Mother Dirt produces, uh, the products are to the skin, what probiotics are to the digestive system, just to give you a, a perspective. Uh, she's a cosmetic and consumer goods entrepreneur. She received her degree in chemical and biological engineering from MIT. Again, reminds me of that, that show. <laughs> her unconventional path combined her technical background with roles at brands like LVMH, Fresh, NutriClick, and Living Proof. She has extensive experience in natural skincare product development, brand building, manufacturing partnerships, product launch strategy, digital advertising, and direct sales. So she has a wealth of experience across the board. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, oh, and her favorite athlete of all time, Monica Sellis, the tennis star. Ladies and gentlemen, Jasmina Aganovic. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited to be here at, uh, at, at UMass Boston. Uh, I didn't actually grow up in Boston, but I have to say that one of the main reasons that I wanted to stay here is because of the ideas and because of all of the different types of people that are sharing their ideas and conveying their message and developing them into things that we interact with and ultimately affect our lives. And the notion of an idea is actually quite, quite an interesting one. They have a pretty profound effect on us to a variety of degrees. They can be scary. They can be inspiring. They can be powerful. And one of the things that I've always been fascinated by is the human aspect of ideas. Uh, the story behind the person that came up with it, right? An idea ultimately starts in someone's head. And there's a magic nature to it, right? It's something about that unique human and the way that they think and the way that they see the world. But their journey is also a fascinating one. The path that they take to making it a reality, the effect that they have on other people and how they share that idea. So today I'll be sharing with you an idea that me and my team have been working on and sharing with others, but also I'll be sharing a little bit of the human story behind how we got to where we are. So speaking of crazy ideas, uh, bacteria itself has come a long way. Uh, so speaking of an absurd idea, Albert Einstein once said that if an idea is not absurd, that it's not worth pursuing. Uh, so think about bacteria as an example. Uh, bacteria is something that, had, had I told you 10 years ago that we would be consuming bacteria, live bacteria and little pills, and that we would be proactively seeking this out, you probably would have thought that that was absurd. Uh, but not anymore. Bacteria is no longer a bad word. Uh, we've started to change our relationship with the microbial world. We have friendly cartoons. We have pills that we take, the probiotics containing live bacteria, and we seek out certain foods because of their rich bacterial content. And it goes beyond that, beyond the foods that we eat and other things that we're able to buy at the grocery store. Next level drugs are being developed all around bacteria. So we have Ceres that is also actually a Boston-based company uh, that's developing a therapeutic for C. diff, uh, which is a very serious infection that kills thousands of people every, every year. Uh, and then also Ubiome, which is uh, harnessing the power of their citizen scientists to understand a better profile of, uh, of, of what disease looks like in the gut. But what about bacteria on the skin? Somehow we're not quite there yet with that idea, right? Our relationship with bacteria on our skin is very different from bacteria in the gut. Uh, we are still at war with the microbial world when it comes to the skin. Bacteria on the skin, you absolutely want to kill it, right? But it's not just the hand sanitizers that we're using. It's a lot more than that. Every single product, whether we know it or not, contains some level of antimicrobial activity. 
whether it's very obvious, uh, the mouthwash that we use that tells us it's going to kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria in our mouth, uh, or something that we're not completely aware of, something like the basic moisturizer that we use. All of these products contain a preservative. Preservatives are inherently put in products to prevent any sort of growth from happening. So all of these products have a little bit of microbial activity. So imagine using these products like we all do on a daily basis multiple times since we're young. So imagine what effect that's having on the skin. But we're at war with the microbial world, right? All of the bacteria on our skin is bad. Well, why do we do these things? Why do we use these products? Why are we at war with the microbial world for the skin? Why are we still approaching it from a sterilization perspective? It's because we want to be healthy, right? We don't want to pass germs. We don't want to catch colds. Acne is caused by bacteria. Bacteria is bad. Uh, we want to look healthy. Uh, and I, I put that there because it's, it's a really important one. You know, superficiality aside and what we might believe by it, nothing can really describe the emotional and psychological toll of struggling with something like acne uh, for most of your life, unless you go through it. So I pose the question, are we? Are we actually healthy? So a few statistics here. Uh, 60 million people in the United States are struggling with acne. And this is growing. Uh, and it's no longer isolated to teenagers. Uh, it's actually becoming a pretty epidemic thing in, uh, in adults as well. How do we treat acne? Topical antibiotics by killing P. acne on the skin. Right? That's been the main treatment for it. Internal antibiotics as well. Atopic dermatitis. And I'm specifically focusing on children here. It is obviously present in adults, and I'm sure that some people in this room have atopic dermatitis, basically eczema. Uh, but I found this statistic uh, particularly astounding. It's for children. It's becoming very prominent in children as well. In fact, 12% of children have atopic dermatitis, and that's tripled in the last three decades. And in fact, it has a 90% tracking rate with asthma. What does that mean? It means that if a child has asthma, there's a 90% chance that they also have eczema. Isn't that interesting? How do we treat eczema? bleach baths. In fact, two-thirds of people in the United States are going to report a problem with their skin. So this is just two examples. Uh, everything from, it goes beyond that, everything as benign as just basic sensitive skin, which is, by the way, one of the fastest growing categories in the personal care market, to more serious things like psoriasis and rosacea, all the way to the very serious things like staph infections and MRSA. All of these things are increasing pretty dramatically. And yet, there's no shortage of products to help solve our problems. And yet, it doesn't seem to be getting us quite there. But what if we apply the same type of approach and the same type of system as we did to our gut? We know that our gut is an ecosystem. And the more and more we're starting to learn about our body, we're learning that our entire body is an ecosystem. In fact, we know, you might have heard the statistic, that we have 10 times more bacterial cells than we do human cells. It's not all inside us, guys. No matter how comfortable it makes us feel, or uncomfortable, I should say, we're covered with bacteria as well. So what if we apply what we've started to learn about the gut to the skin, and we start to embrace the skin as an ecosystem, and start to look at that ecosystem, and see if we can start to identify patterns and start to learn from the microorganisms that are there. So just like in our guts, we have bacteria that are working in our favor. This is the whole purpose of probiotics and why many people take these supplements and eat certain fermented foods. It's to get bacteria on their side. It's to crowd out the bad. It's to promote the good. It's to help digest our food. It's to help make us healthy. Well, what about for the skin? Once we start viewing the skin as an ecosystem, how do we think about the products that we've been using? How do we think about this war with the microbial world that we've been in? Have we confused clean with sterile? Certainly with the skin, we strive to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria. But with our guts, definitely not. We already know that bacteria is necessary there, the good guys. So confusing cleanliness with sterility is how we've approached our personal care. And maybe on our path to this definition of clean, and this definition of sterile, we've started to move away from health. So adopting that same concept as gut probiotics, 
bacteria that are on our side, they're doing something, they're consuming the bad, they're producing the good. It's a continuous recycling process that is working in our favor. So what about on the skin? Why don't we imagine a microbe that consumes our sweat? We'll start with sweat. We don't have particularly positive associations with our, our sweat, right? It makes us feel gross. It's why we want to take a shower. And what if it turns it into good things for the skin? What if we could stop using deodorant, stop using moisturizers? What if we could do something even more powerful, fight things like acne and MRSA? So imagine instead of killing things on our skin, we're helping balance out this ecosystem to solve some of these problems and start to simplify our routines. This is some of the work that the team at AOBiome is working on. And this is the little guy that we're talking about. So this is our microbial machine, uh, AOBs. That stands for ammonia oxidizing bacteria. It is literally consuming the irritating components in your sweat. And it's producing good things for you. It's producing an antibacterial, believe it or not, a bacteria that produces an antibacterial. It's a selective antibacterial. And a potent anti-inflammatory, something called nitric oxide. There are two tracks within which we are pursuing this. Uh, one is through our pharma and our biotech research. Uh, we are exploring the therapeutic indications of uh, the effect of this bacteria on inflammatory skin conditions. Uh, and then the other is through Mother Dirt, which was mentioned earlier today. Uh, this is the, the side of the business that I manage and I run. Uh, and this is where you can go and right now buy spray on bacteria. So imagine that as a concept for skincare. But I want to tell you a story, and, and I'd, I'd had a photo in here of, um, of, of David. This is, this is the human side, um, and I don't, unfortunately don't know where it is, um, but the story doesn't change, and I definitely don't need slides to tell the story. Um, you know, the, the human side of how this came about, the way that I told this story is kind of logical. It still may sound absurd and crazy, um, but this is, this is not how the story came about, and this is not how the story came to be. Uh, my colleague um, and our scientific founder, David Whitlock, is the one that started putting these pieces together 12 years ago uh, when he was asked by someone, why do horses roll in the dirt? And most of us wouldn't think much about it. They're animals, right? They're disgusting, they're filthy, that's what they're supposed to do. We've seen our dogs do it, we roll our eyes, and we're like, oh my God, no, please stop doing that. But uh, he was wondering why. If animals who are you know, not as cerebral as humans that have been shaped so much by our interactions and our, and our social interactions, uh, why have animals evolved this behavior? Uh, turns out, he was thinking about what that dirt might have that they need. And so he started doing some research. He found a type of bacteria in the dirt, the ammonia oxidizing bacteria that we were talking about earlier. And he found a few really interesting commonalities with that bacteria. He found that they were an incredibly important species to every microbiome in nature. And that all mammals, not just horses, roll in the dirt. He came up with this theory that Mother Nature had us all evolve with this type of bacteria. And certainly as you think about how we used to live, where we were out in the environment, we were immersed in the world, we were walking barefoot, we were swimming in lakes and rivers and streams, this bacteria used to be part of our ecosystem. But we wiped it out in the last 50 to 100 years. So here, um, here, just to reinforce the initial kind of realization, which is that the, uh, the AOBs, they come from every, uh, every stable microbiome. Every animal is rolling in the dirt. And then more interestingly, which I didn't mention before, we have aboriginal tribes that have been swabbed and studied, and their skin, sure enough, is filled with AOBs. AOBs are proving to be uh, a keystone species, a peacekeeper species in the skin. Everywhere in nature where ammonia is being produced, like on our sweat, this bacteria is present to help the nitrogen cycle complete, except modern human skin. So isn't that a funny realization, especially looking at how much our personal care products have likely changed our ecosystem? So why have we wiped them out? This bacteria doesn't take much to kill it, simple soap. One shower with the soap that we probably use multiple times a day wipes it out 100%. It's that sensitive, it's that delicate.
But it's not just the products that we're using, it's the environment. We spend less and less time outdoors, more time indoors. Our lifestyles have changed as well. We do a lot of things to keep the outdoors out and the indoors in. We've altered so much of uh, the microbiomes of our homes and offices. So what now? Well, can we create products that reintroduce this type of bacteria to the skin and potentially other beneficial bacteria to the skin? Can we start to cultivate this idea of less is more? How can we start to make the skin microbiome part of skincare formulation? Right now, cosmetic chemistry has come up with so many fantastic and amazing technologies to deliver beautiful products with fantastic absorption and efficacy. But no one has really been looking at the skin microbiome, and it quite literally is a new discovery in the last five years. How can we understand its role in skin health? And this is what AOBiome is working on with inflammatory skin diseases. But more fundamentally, we're thinking of how we can rethink clean. The remainder of David's story and his idea is a really powerful one. So this was 12 years ago. You can imagine that bacteria still had a bad rap back then. Uh, he started cultivating this bacteria, may or may not have been in a barn, uh, with a makeshift bioreactor that he had created. And as he started to understand the simple impact that soap had on bacteria, he decided to start creating the bacteria himself, putting it on his skin, and to be extra sure, he stopped bathing. So this experiment is still running to this day. David said that if anything bad happened, that he would start showering again. But nothing bad happened. And no, he doesn't smell. In fact, he started to notice a variety of health benefits. So I put this photo up here because this is what motivates us. It's changing how we perceive clean. It's changing how we perceive healthy. This is baby Emerson. It's the son of one of our uh, users. You know, you look at that photo and you laugh and you smile and it evokes feelings of joy and nostalgia. But somehow we lose that as we become adults. And we're trying to get back to that, back to that time when it was okay to play and it was okay to get dirty. And fundamentally, as David always says, that this was too important an idea not to pursue. Thanks, everyone. Couple questions, couple questions. First of all, just for us to go back on that 30. So do you think that nowadays with, um, you know, we, we see it all the time with kids that are spending so much time on their tablets, with their video games, they're not, this is another reason to get them out to play aside from all the health benefits of the exercise and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. I, I read a statistic the other day that children these days are spending 50% uh, less time outdoors than they were two decades ago. Um, they're spending more time indoors. And, you know, baby Emerson, now science is starting to prove that his immune system is going to be healthier because of that. And, you know, oh, my goodness, he's, he's putting dirt in his mouth. But turns out, not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good. Is it too, still, uh, can I roll around in the, is it, am I not too ah, old to be rolling around? Yeah. I mean, for adults. I mean, that's good for kids. But what about <laughs> for our generation, for someone that's older? What's, yeah. What do you recommend to pick up that? Really good question. The reality of it is, is it's just not practical for modern humans today. And also in a city like Boston, regardless of how beautiful it is, our dirt and our soil has also changed a lot. Mm. Uh, so it's not quite accessible to us. Uh, so that's a little bit of what we're trying to, to solve with both AOBiome and, and Mother Dirt, where we've isolated this bacteria in a pure form so you don't have to worry about it and you don't have to quite literally roll in the dirt. So you're going to be able to buy it in a tube? Yeah, you can already buy it. We have thousands of people that are spraying this bacteria on their skin. Believe it or not, people are, are fascinated by this concept and really enjoying it. Good. As a child, when did you know science was for you? At what moment did you say, wow, I think I really like science? It's an interesting question. Um, for me, it was not a specific epiphany. I think it was a series of events that, that happened over the course of time. I think I was, like so many teenagers, um, struggling with, with my skin, and I was proactively seeking out solutions and alternatives for what I could do to, to help myself. Um, and that was, I think, what got me initially interested in how products worked and formulation. So that was probably a little bit of the, a little bit of the trigger. And then I went to a school like MIT, and there were so many inspiring things there. Yeah, I've been reading. I mean, you have a lot of uh, per great personal skill sets. Which one do you think is your best? <laughs> um, my best personal skill set. I think, I think I really care about people. Uh, I think that that's always been really important to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have a bioengineer from MIT. You have this company and everything. Tell uh, us all something you really stink at. Something I really stink yeah, at? Yeah, because you're obviously very good at many things. So. Um, what am I really bad at? 
I'm bad at booking travel on time, which my whole team here uh, is nodding their heads. Um, I'm bad at booking travel on time. I'm also um, bad at scheduling doctor's appointments and bad at doing all of those things that we generally should do on a timely basis. Yeah. I procrastinate. I guess yeah. that's what it is. She's human, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.